Well, let's head straight to Westminster and uh, join our political correspondent, Carol Walker, because, Carol, lots of politics tied up with HS2, really, because it does depend. It's such an expensive project. It really needs cross-party political consensus. That's right, and that's what the Transport Secretary, Patrick McLaughlin, has been stressing today, that unless this project does win broad cross-party consensus, it's never really going to survive. This is a project that's not due to be completed until 2033, so you've got to have the major parties backing it if they're to win the confidence of investors and if the project is going to succeed. But uh, Labour are saying that they are supporting it for now, but they are not yet convinced that the benefits outweigh the costs, despite that new analysis that we were hearing about in that report. And not everyone on the Conservative side is convinced either. And I'm joined by one of those doubters, Cheryl Gillan, a former minister and uh, MP for Chesham and Amersham. Um, why are you not convinced of the benefits that we've been hearing about of this huge project? Well, first of all, this is an enormous project, and history tells us that infrastructure projects of this sort always uh, blow the budget. And I think when we're already talking, including rolling stock of a £50 billion budget, you can rest assured that the taxpayer will be paying a much higher price for this project by the time it's finished. Uh, much higher, because most of the prices that we're working on are at 2011 prices. But more importantly, um, I started, obviously, uh, looking at the impact on my constituency. But having looked at this project more closely, I don't think it does what it says on the tin. But what would you I'd say to those who are saying that people like you are NIMBYs? You're worried about the effect it's going to have on some beautiful parts of your own constituency, but you're not sufficiently taking account of the potential economic benefits for the rest of the country. Oh, yes, I am, because people that are against HS2, putting it in simple terms, uh, are not just asking for nothing else to be done in the uh, transport infrastructure network. They are suggesting alternatives. And that backyard of mine that you talk about is an area of outstanding natural beauty. And at a time when we should be protecting the environment, we're about to drive a high-speed rail line right through the middle of it. And the disruption that that is going to cause to communities, to businesses, uh, and the damage to our countryside is immeasurable. But let me just say there are alternatives. And I don't think the hundreds of pages that the government has produced today are really adding to it very much for the simple reason that if this business case was so good, it should have been made four years ago when the project was first put on the table. Well, the government says that the alternatives would be 14 years of disruption on all the existing lines. And they've got this vote in the Commons on Thursday. Um, how much opposition on the Conservative benches do you think there's going to be to this project? Well, firstly, I think the scaremongering of the 14 years of, of closures is, is quite ridiculous. And I think it shows you how desperate the government has got to try and big up this project and to get support. Because if it doesn't get cross-party support, it will be difficult to put through. As far as the opposition is concerned uh, uh, on our benches or on any other benches, there are uh, many of my colleagues whose opposition to this project is well known. Uh, this is just a, a paving bill. This gives them the license to print money. It is, in fact, a blank check for more money to be spent by HS2 Limited and the Department of Transport. And I should imagine there will be people that will follow me through the lobbies uh, against this project, as I fully intend to vote against it, which I think is, is uh, uh, my position has always been clear. I do so with a heavy heart. I don't like voting against my government. But Labour, of course, is completely deserting the peace and has put their people down onto a one-line whip. So they are playing politics with this project in a big way. I think I come from the position that there are better alternatives, better ways to spend money, and this is not good value for money for the taxpayer. Okay, Charles Gillen, thank you very much indeed. And of course, MPs on all sides will be studying that latest case that the government has put out today ahead of the vote on Thursday. Carol, many thanks indeed. Carol Walker there.